doesn't deserve to exist. He'll never be what they want him to be. So one night he begged to smile and found a way to get some liquor. And he thought to himself as he chugs and that burn feeling fills his throat that he'll never be good enough. And with each swig was a reason for not being enough. Each swig was for each person that he hurt, disappointed, lost as a friend. And soon he went completely numb, blacked out. Support finds child not breathing properly, unable to speak. They think the child's on drugs, then realizing it's alcohol. It's his lungs shutting down. Support decided to get him in the truck and rush to the ER. They stick an IB in and check level 0.37 BAC. Child almost died. After sobering up and leaving the hospital, he returns home. He's watched. He has no phone. He has nothing but the blanket and Betty's in. And the child support tells him, Do you know how much the R bill cost us? $1,000 for your bullshit. Now we have to deal with the cost of meds and therapy. Did you get what you wanted? Starts therapy. Child is diagnosed with anxiety, depression, ADHD, borderline personality disorder, bipolar disorder, and PTSD. Psychologist tells him that he's delusional to like an older man, to have a crush on a man, but the support is so thankful for him. This child tells them that he's homophobic, but they don't care how the child feels. Support says he's a great doctor. Then the child later found out that the professional support told the support about all the things he had said, which a 17-year-old at that time had thought was confidential. This child learns not to trust professionals, too. No one can be true support. No one will hear him. Child will always never be good enough. This child is put on medication to help with the symptoms. Support says he was keeping up on his responsibilities and everything was fine. But the child was feeling the shift. The child was feeling the real delusion of his reality, but thought it was the meds doing their job. Fast forward, six months before turning 18, child finds love with someone that hears him, that sees him, that understands him, lets him share his feelings without judgment, tells him that his music is incredible, the best he's ever heard, tells him that he's worth it, and he's so glad the child's attempt didn't be taken away from this world. This child starts to believe life could be better, believes that he isn't a burden to this man, believes that he's finally heard. The support finds out about these plans to drop out of school and live with him. The child and support go visit their grandparents, tell them about the child's problems and plans and bombard him with questions. You're wasting your life away. What about college? He's not good for you. And then speaking about the child in third person as he's sitting at the table in front of them, threatening to come up with a plan to get the child admitted so he couldn't leave the state to live with this man when he turns 18. Support decided not to at a later date. Then the child's phone calls with this man were listening to on another house phone on the same line. Child has no privacy and is almost 18. This child struggles with bullies at this other school on top of all this because everything from the previous school had followed him. Everyone knew about him, smaller town than the other, and of course, people talk. Couple days to turn 18. Support Amal doesn't give child a birthday party. Because it's not what they wanted of their child. It's more of a farewell party of disappointing their beliefs of him and his future than a happy 18th birthday. They even post about it on Facebook like every year before, so of course the conti child continues to feel like an inconvenience. Fast forward. Between 2017 and 2022, goes through sexual assault trauma ten times. Support tells her child from the very first assault that maybe you shouldn't put yourself in the situation for that to happen to you. This child learns once again he'll never be heard. Everything is his fault. Asking himself, how the fuck is this my fault? Can't seem to rid himself of the grime they imprinted on him. The rash of disgust. No matter the amount of showers that he takes. Why won't it all just rinse away? Anyway, this child tries to have a communication but loses hope once again. This child struggles to eat properly. Amounts of food, smells, and talking about food in general make this child nauseous and anxious. Support still tells her child it's a pain in the ass to come see him to have to eat somewhere on the way rather than at the hotel room where he'll be. This child learns that he's just another inconvenience for struggling with triggers and anxiety symptoms that are not his fault. He never asked to be this way. Support still tells her child they need to stay connected. They need to get past in the past and have a fresh clean slate so that'll make them happier having connection to their child so the moral of the story is don't tell me to just get over it or it happened so long ago or that they are your family you have to keep in touch with them or guilt trip me because they are my family and they won't be around forever in my healing i'm learning to put up boundaries for those who've hurt me so deeply it is not my job to keep them happier it is not my responsibility how they feel of me i am no longer seeking validation of the choices in my life from those who scarred my soul i belong in this world for myself and not for anyone else i am in charge of the way that i heal no one else because I am me, the true, exquisite me, and that's all that I'll ever be.